as Dick mentioned, Eric Devendorf is back with the torn ACL a year ago, so he's back in the backcourt with Flynn Paul Harris, Christoph Anganat, and Arinzi Anawaku up front for Syracuse. For Florida, a young, developing team. They do have Walter Hodge in the backcourt. He's a link back to the national championship teams, along with the Lathis. He'll start in the backcourt. Dan Werner, Chandler Parsons, and Alex Tyus up front. Florida very young in the front court, and they are concerned, or, or Billy Donovan is concerned about the strength of Anawaku on the inside. This is a a significant game. It's very early in the season, but it's one of those games that later in the season uh, you'll measure teams against one another. It'll be interesting to see how Florida and Syracuse do tonight. Remember, they'll both play tomorrow because Kansas and Washington are playing later tonight, and there's a third-place game and a championship game tomorrow here in Kansas City. Johnny Flynn for three. And a lock with an offensive rebound going right back at Dan Werner. Spins into the double team and he scores. I think that could be the That's advantage when you look at Syracuse on the inside with Anawaku. I don't know if they have a matchup on the interior that can really negate him. They certainly don't have somebody with the strength or experience that Anawaku has. Well, they thought they had him in Spates, but Spates right. went to the NBA. 16th pick in the draft and now with the Sixers. It's been just one year down in Gainesville. Florida's also lost Jay Lucas, who transferred out, so he's going to be playing somewhere else next year. Calathis can't roll it in with the left hand. Nice change of direction. Man-to-man -man defense by Syracuse, but you will not see that long. The patented 2-3 zone has been on display already early this season, although at times Syracuse has played more man, and in practice they say they practice man more than zone. Devendorf misses badly. Calathis tries to thread the needle into Werner. And we're going to have a held ball on the inside. The arrow will keep it at this end of the floor. Hall of Famer Jim Beheim leading the Syracuse Orange. 33rd year as head coach at Syracuse. Tell you, amazing job he's done. So consistent. Certainly deserves to be a Hall of Famer. Paul Harris with the rebound. Nice look ahead for Johnny Flynn. Tell you, Paul Harris got a body like Schwarzenegger. <laughs> he That's does. unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, and Anganat is going to get called for the offensive foul. They got to get on. I'm going to have to start to make some shots from the perimeter. Billy Donovan, back-to-back -back national championships, was incredible in that run. He is such a master communicator. He has all the parts you want as a coach. He communicates well, he can recruit, and he knows the game. So in this tournament, Dick, the, of the four teams who are here, three of them have won national championships in the last six years. Syracuse in 03, Florida in 06 and 07, and, of course, Kansas just last year. This is Tyus, kind of undersized to play in the middle. Calathis back into Tyus, and a block by Anganat. See, those are the little things Anganat does. Gives him some good defense, hustles, rebounds. He's from Belgium, spent a couple of years in junior college, spent last year with Syracuse, says he felt like a freshman last year. Now, he feels like a senior, which he is. Very rare that a player coming from Europe doesn't make shots from yeah, the perimeter. Yeah, you're right. He's more of a blue-collar, hustle, defense, rebounding kind of guy. Harris. The jump shot is not the best part of his game, although Jim Beheim says it is starting to improve. Chandler Parsons, he can shoot it from outside. Not there, left it short, and he knew it. He's been struggling shooting the ball. He had some good numbers last year, but he's struggling shooting from the perimeter. So two and a half minutes in, just one made field goal. Syracuse with an early 2 to nothing lead. Anganat, nice look inside on Owaku, surrounded. Anganat comes up with a rebound, and he's fouled. Good work on the inside by the Orange. See, that's the one area Florida's got to get tougher on, on their interior rebounding and scoring around the basket. This might be the advantage. There's the pass inside. Look at the block shot. Great angle. Now we're going to watch him really working on the inside. Good offensive rebounding. The foul on Chandler Parsons. Anganat to the line. There were a number of players in the Syracuse program who got more hits last year than they might have expected. There were so many injuries on the Syracuse team last year. Anganat played more and more as the season went along. There were times when Jim Beheim really only had six or seven players at his disposal for a game. Well, you know, he lost even off and routing so quickly, and that took away any versatility and flexibility. I mean, they provide him some three-point shooting, something that really makes Flynn even better because it really creates space on the floor. Calathis open for three. What an all-round talent he is. A 6'6 sophomore who, as a freshman, led the SEC in assists a year ago. His brother was a good player, too. Now yes. playing in Greece, played for 
Phil Martelli at St. Joe's. Yeah, Pat is about 6'10". Nick's 6'6". Six, six. Nick spent the summer playing for Greece's 20 and under team. Blocked from behind there. Parsons got Harris. Walter Hodge. And Flynn knocks it away. Devendorf pushing it. Flynn, nice jump stop. High off the glass and in. I tell you, you talk about explosive. The great first step to the goal. You think about the great point guards in America. He's going to be right up there yeah. with Ty Lawson. You think about Stephon Curry, who's really a combination guard. Can score, handle the ball, distribute it. And Kalafis is kind of an unconventional point guard. He's 6'6". Six, six. And actually played off the ball a lot last year, although he picks up an assist right there on the basket by Tyus. But you don't go too far down the list until you tar start talking about Kalathis. Yeah, Kalathis there also. What about Darren Collison yep. there at UCLA? Yep. Love his quickness. Didn't have a great, great play when we saw him earlier in the Madison Square Garden. The offense is starting to heat up in the last minute and a half or so. Harris, good position inside. Blocked. Parsons got him. Harris, and after Harris, the fact, a foul. Harris looks to me like he plays football. Yep, I tell you what, right. they ought to take him at Syracuse. Put him on the football team. He's so athletic. Johnny Flynn, all basketball, all touch off the glass. It's, and there's wow. one of the uh, one of the other Hall of Famers. Congratulations to you well, and Charles you. Barkley, two of the seven inductees into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame here in Kansas City, right adjacent to this building. Beautiful facility. Great night last night. Uh, Arnie Farron went in, Danny Manning went in, Billy Packer went in, Nolan Richardson went in, and uh, Coach Jim Phelan went in. A terrific class. I'll tell you one thing, Charles, the round man of rebound, he was really, you talk about agile, you talk about a guy that was hostile and mobile, and he was not fragile. <laughs> the last foul before the break, by the way, was on Chandler Parsons of Florida, his second, so he's gone to the bench. We've got some subs coming in for the Gators. Tell me what I love about Charles, he's got a hard a goal. He helps us so much with the V Foundation. Mr. Generosity. He and Ernie Johnson do a great job together. Kenny Smith and they company, yep. TNT, they do a phenomenal job. Alan Chaney is into the game for Florida. So is Ray Shipman, a freshman out of Miramar, Florida. Andy Routens back from the torn ACL has checked in for Syracuse. The Shipman's a good yeah. athlete. They yeah. really like his athletic ability. He can run up and down the floor. Chris Joseph in for Syracuse as well. The tap is up and good for Cheney. There are a lot That's of big bodies for Cheney. Florida. Just none of them are that experienced. And Billy Donovan is still working on that rotation as Florida drops into a 2-3. Yeah, they've been playing some zone here yeah. tonight. He expects Syracuse to that zone, but Billy Donovan multidimensional. And Syracuse does have some shooters. The guy with the ball, Andy Routens, is one. On the inside, Rick Jackson. Harris from 16 feet away rattles it home. I tell you one thing, he drilled that baby in. Absolutely drilled it in. It's scary how quiet it's here. I can't get over how quiet it is. Dan. We're going to start waking people up. We're going to start getting a little loud out here. Get a little noisy. Get a little excitement. It'll get a little bit louder for the second game when Kansas takes on Washington. That game also available here on ESPN2. And the third place game, a championship game tomorrow night. Hodge off to Cheney. And over the top of the backboard. I think Hodge, one of those kids, was a contributor, as you said earlier, on the national championship teams. He can make the shot from the perimeter. It gives them experience on a perimeter. They're going to be very strong on the exterior. The question is, what will they get on their interior? Right. That's the big concern of Billy Donovan. Picks second in the SEC East, behind Tennessee, just ahead of Kentucky. Does that sound right to you in well, terms of preseason? Yeah, well, you know, think about that. But what about the other club, Syracuse? They're picked eighth in the Big East. Does that tell you how tough the Big East is? Connecticut, Louisville. Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, Villanova, Marquette, Georgetown were picked ahead of them. And we haven't talked about West Virginia, Providence, yep. and Cincinnati. And Seton Hall has really been playing well early. Well, right now, four of the top eight teams in the country in terms of rankings come out of the Big East. Last year, Syracuse struggled. Again, undermanned the injuries to Devendorf and Routens, 21-14. and 14, Missed the tournament for the second year in a row. But I think most people expect, and I think you're among them, this is a better deeper, more talented team, and should get back to the dance this year. Oh, I really believe that. I thought they got a raw deal two years ago. I really do. 
He should have been in a truck. Nice pass. Great look. Harris into Chris That's Joseph for the layup. They like Joseph. Joseph. Jimmy was telling us before the game, he likes his ability to slash. He's active. Had a brother that went to Michigan State and transferred to yep. Vermont. Maurice Joseph. Uh, Joseph from Montreal went down and lived with the family. Dick down to the D.C. area to get exposed to U.S. high school basketball to get him ready for the collegiate level. He went to Archbishop Carroll High yep. School. Out in D.C. Look at Flynn really hounding Calathis. They're good friends, these two. They communicate all the time. Good defense leads to the turnover. Good hustle by Hodge. Knocks it out of bounds. You think about some of the great sophomores in college basketball, their names are right in that mix. You throw in a name, James Harden's playing great for Arizona State and Herb Sendick. Oh, they had a great one down in North Carolina State, and they didn't realize it. Routens with a deep three. Well, his daddy stands up and says, you know what? He shoots it like his daddy. His daddy was some passer. He shoots it better than his daddy. His daddy was some passer. Now. Yeah. His dad, of course, former Syracuse grade Leo. Irving Walker, number 11 with the ball. Freshman guard for Florida. He's getting a lot more time since the departure of Jay Lucas because of the departure of Jay Lucas. Rebound and a putback for Cheney. See, that's what they need. Cheney, come in, give him some offensive rebounding. He needs some guys to work on that glass. Routon's wide open on the wing. This is this three. The Florida missed an assignment to leave somebody that wide open. Walker real quick out of New York City can penetrate. Little off balance on that shot, and here comes Flynn. Behind the oh, back and around nice Walker play. and off to Routens. No! Flynn says, you got to convert that. I need an assist. <laughs> you got to make that happen. You going to give me an assist tonight? <laughs> you gave me an assist last night. You were very good last night. Thank you. As the MC, you and Seth Davis did an excellent job in terms of the Hall of Fame ceremony. Thank you. Just happy to be there. It was a, it was a really fun night. I thought it was great that it worked out. You know, the Hall of Fame is here. Danny Manning getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. A special moment for all the folks here. Dan Werner. Dan Werner with a bucket for Florida. You know, Werner can shoot the three, but if he can add that driving ability to his game, that gives him another dimension. So how about Florida playing zone right now? Syracuse playing man. Well, they're saying, let's see you make that perimeter shot. You would think with Routens and Devendorf, they become a threat. Harris from the outside. Don't let him shoot that yeah. all day. They'll say, you can take that all day, Paul. And Johnny Flynn, ju he just said something to Harris, and it probably was about that last shot. Harris taking a three is not option number one in the Syracuse offense. Long jumper is there for Joseph. I'll tell you, he's going to get a lot more minutes. I can tell by the tone of Jimmy Beheim's voice before the game that he really, really likes that kid. Syracuse with an early lead here in Kansas City, taking on Florida. Kansas-Washington later tonight on ESPN2. You know, both these games, to me, are really like final exams. That they're going to get a test to find out what they're about. Because they've been all beaten up on cupcakes. And plus, Jimmy Beham's traveling a little bit. He's out here. I can't believe he left Syracuse. We've seen some threes earlier. We're going to talk. Oh, Billy thinks it may have more to do with defense than offense with the line going back. But other coaches don't think it'll make much of a difference at all. And Iwaku was fouled on the dunk attempt. Well, I think what's going to happen, you're going to see better shooters shooting the three. I don't think you're going to see everybody out there jocking them up. I think it's going to make a difference that the percentages are going to go down. But if you can shoot it like Billy can, yep. remember that 87 as well, your partner in the next game, Robert Montgomery Knight, won the national championship that year in 87 when Billy Donovan was shooting the threes. Indiana, a pretty good three-point shooter by the name of Steve Wolf. That's right. I'll tell you this, though. Watching shoot around today, I'm not sure Billy Donovan's the best shooter even in his own family. Watching his, his dad son. build? No, his dad. Oh, his dad? His dad. Oh, wow. Watching his dad shoot today. He had a shooting contest with Nick Calathis. They had a three-point shooting contest today, and Billy Donovan's dad beat Calathis in the well, contest. His dad's in the Hall of Fame up the Boston College. Yep. He can really shoot the ball. Well, we saw Florida with some pressure last time down. Dick Johnny Flynn is not in the game right now. Shipman off the glass. It won't stay down for him. And Werner oh, has picked up his second foul in less than a minute. So Parsons has two, and Werner has two. That's early That's trouble for the Gators. Yeah, hey, you know, I talked about Super South with Kalidus and Flynn. You think about some great ones. I mentioned James Harden had a double-double the other night. What about Manny Harris? You and I saw him. Mm -hmm. Blake Griffin's been out of, off the charts. He had 35-21 and 21 the other day from Oklahoma. Patrick Patterson, who we think is going to be special. I can't wait to see Robbie Hummel when we go down to Purdue for the Duke-Purdue yep. matchup. And you're throwing Flint. Then think about Lucas down at Michigan State. And another one at DeJuan Blair's a good one yep. down at Pittsburgh. Nice bounce pass. Shipman will lay it in. Another assist for Nick Kalathis. Kalathis just has the ability to see the whole court. Well, he's got the great size. So he looks right over the top of the defense. It's great vision. 
has great flair, too. On Oaku, back rim. The follow is good for Joseph, his third field goal. Joseph gets about eight minutes a night. Very active. The way he's playing, he's going to get more than 18 minutes. 19-13 Syracuse here midway through the first half in Kansas City. Surprised you're not seeing that zone? A little bit. Shipman inside, and he's fouled. For more on Calathis, let's go back to Doris Burke. Well, guys, with the decision of Jay Lucas to transfer out of Florida, and as yet we do not know where he will attend his next school, but for Nick Calathis, it means the ball is in his hands a little bit more. He led the league in assists last year, guys, so he's used to it being in his hands. When I asked him the difference, he said, my main role now is leadership. He said, Jay was a very vocal guy. He said, it's my responsibility with all the youth on our team to become more of a vocal leader. Certainly, he has the basketball skills to lead, Dick. You know, Doris, you talk about Jay Lucas transferring. I don't understand it. When you think about all the minutes he was getting, he wants the ball in his hands, plays with Kaleidas. If you're a guard, you can handle it, you can shoot it, you're going to really be versatile. You can get your minutes and you can be effective. I think when you look at Jay Lucas, he's got to be very selective where he goes. If he wants to be the guy with the ball in his hands, he better pick a school where they don't recruit by him and where he sits maybe and becomes a third guard. I think he's going to end up somewhere like Baylor or Texas A&M. Of course, his older brother, uh, a terrific guard at Oklahoma State and his dad, John Lucas, one of the one of the greats. One of the greats of yeah. all time. Yeah. Certainly a super superstar. Jay Lucas, obviously, they're going to miss him. There's no question. He can shoot the three. He gave him quality minutes. And I thought he and Kalaitis really blended yeah. well together. Florida continues to play the two three. And Johnny Flynn is back in for Syracuse. He doesn't sit out much, although he'll play a little bit less this year than he did last year when he hardly missed a minute, especially in conference play. He averaged over 39 minutes per game in conference play a year ago. He's like that. He's a well, how about Jim Beheim telling us before the game, with the exception of Carmelo Anthony, Johnny Flynn had the best season for him any freshman's ever had. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You talk about Carmelo's year. That was off the charts yes. totally, yep. leading him to a national title. Irving Walker in the backcourt now with Calathis. Shipman will pull up. Mr. Basketball in the state of Florida a year ago. And it's going to drop. Count it for Alan Chaney. I tell you, Chaney's given him some solid minutes off that bench. Been very active. They got a kid coming in next year, though. Oh, is Florida going to be excited with Mr. Boynton? Kenny Boynton. There they are working on the glass. Good offensive rebound. Conversion. It's the old-fashioned three-point attempt now. Chaney spent a year in prep school last year. Very active physical player. Already six points tonight. 6'8 out of Baltimore. The foul on Joseph, his first. Still go to the bench and Anganat is back in for the orange both teams fairly deep right now both coaches comfortably going about nine deep as Parsons comes back in and Shipman sits down for the Gators I tell you the one thing with the 2-3 zone that they're playing when you look at uh, Florida it's really negating the explosiveness of Johnny Flynn yep. Flynn's in first two games put 45 points on a board it's keeping him on the perimeter here Devendorf nice penetration in the finish for Anuaku yeah excellent play by Devendorf to create that now you would think Syracuse because they play a lot of zone and they practice it a lot that they play against it a lot. The two units take turns, so you'd think they'd be pretty comfortable playing against the zone. I thought it was very comfortable in that seat, which yes. right in the gap for <laughs> Devendorf who got the layup. You know, Tyus with a jumper. Some of these big guys on Florida have pretty nice-looking jump shots. Well, you know, Tyus is giving him some minutes, and so is Cheney. Penetration by Flynn. Penetration by Devendorf, but he got in the air and turned it over. Numbers. Tyus lays it in. That was an impressive That's transition game. Didn't Alex waste Tyus. any time. Collins, I really like his game. Dad, his vision yes. is unbelievable. He has, He's really thinking one step ahead of the play. Flynn turns it over. Here comes Calathis again. Crossing over oh, on Devendorf and he lays it in. What a great change in direction. Good T.O. baby by Jimmy Beheim. A terrific change. Nick Calatis, my friends, you're watching one of the multidimensional, versatile, super salves in America. A three-point lead for Florida. Chaney, Tyus, some of the big guys have been a big part of that, but Nick Calathis, both with the scoring and especially with the passing, Dick. Oh, there's the pass. Watch this. Great vision. Very simple pass. Catches the transition play. Now watch it change the direction. Watch a low fast change. There's a low fast change. Freezes the defensive player. Lays it on a glass. He's a super south, baby. He's a super south. No doubt about it. Three assists on the night for Calathis. Remember, as a freshman, he led the SEC 
a year ago to better than six assists per game, and this is a pretty impressive group right oh, here. Oh, wow. Look at that sophomore class. I think Blake Griffin is going to make such a strong run for National Player of the Year honors. And I want to know who's big man on campus. Is it Kaleidas or is it Timmy T? Mr. T-Ball, well, I think he's got the edge. Yeah. I think he's got the edge. <laughs> I think Timmy for T's got the edge. You got a chance to win a national championship in football in Florida. I think you got the edge. Oh, they're going to win the national title. It's going to be Florida, it's Oklahoma. Yeah. Florida, Oklahoma for the national title. And Mr. Urban Meyer and Clay are going to win it all. In and out for Devendorf, kept alive by Harris. Here come the Gators on a real run right now. They got a tough one with Alabama in the SEC championship, but they will beat Alabama. They're so explosive, and I love the intensity and the passion of Urban Meyer. Now the zone for Syracuse. Parsons at the top. He's a threat at 6'9 to shoot the ball from out there. He made 37 threes last year. Walker. Parsons will step in. And his shot is not falling. And that's one of the big things that he brings to this team if he can knock it down from outside. We Coach Billy Donovan, of course, under Rick Pitino, becoming a star in college basketball his last two years because of his work ethic, guys. You know, one of the things about Nick this and his big brother Pat, Pat's about 6'10", but he was also a perimeter player. And we asked Nick this morning, why are you guys point guards? Why, are you, why do you handle the ball so much? And he said, well, his dad was his coach, and Pat's coach as well, all the way up. And I said, how big's your dad? He said, 6'5". I said, was he a point guard? He said, no, he never played basketball. I said, he never played basketball. He said, no, he was into motocross racing, but his dad had the good sense, even as big guys, to teach them to handle the ball, to give them guard skills, and it's made them two truly exceptional talents. They really are. They both can really handle the basketball. Routens gets the second Three, opportunity and knocks it down. Number You're not going to give that kid a second chance. Tore his ACL a year ago August, missed all of last season. Then Devendorf tore his ACL in the 10th game of the year for the Orange, and that completely depleted the team. There's that zone. The zone was not effective at all last year. Teams really shot well against it. Good effort on the offensive glass by the Gators, but it comes down to Routens. He needs some help. He knows if he touches it, it's a travel. Nobody else knew to help him, and it cost them two points. Yes, it did. Got a simple three-on-one break. Alex Tyus with a slam, and Jim Beheim is really displeased over on the bench at that last series of events. Devendorf, good penetration again, and another strong finish by Anuaku. I'll tell you, Devendorf's doing a great job against the zone. He really is. He's attacking the gaps of the zone. Look at Jim Behan, really upset with the way he handled that situation in Routens. Yeah, Routens, the turnover led to a dunk by Florida. Syracuse gets one back. Devendorf to Anuaku in a good game and a close game. Here in Kansas City, with a more night, the O'Reilly Auto Parts CBE Classic comes to a dramatic conclusion right here on ESPN2. It's the championship game. The winner of this game against the winner of our next game tonight, Kansas and Washington. The O'Reilly Auto Parts CBE Classic, all a part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's on ESPN2 tomorrow night at 10 Eastern Time. What do you think about Kansas? and Washington in game two tonight. Well, you know, I think you're going to see some underrated players. I think when you talk about John Brockman, as you look at some Kansas faithful, you think about Brockman of Washington, he's so underrated. Averaged 17 points a game, 11 rebounds last year, but they didn't win. I think when you look at that club, also they got a quick guard in Isaiah Thomas, mm -hmm. but you look at Kansas, they're reloading. They really are reloading, but it's certainly a different club with the complexion. Sharon Williams and Cole Aldridge should have great years. Calathis has returned to the game for Florida. Here comes Syria trying to break the tie. Flynn the penetration. Routens the extra pass. Devendorf a travel. You know, Devendorf travel right there. He played in high school at Oak Hill. Ready for this? Played with Ty Lawson, Kevin Durant, Jamont Gordon, and they lost two games. <laughs> I said, how do you lose wow. with Durant, Ty Lawson, and Gordon? And yet he said, we finished number one in the country. Their two losses, they lost to Julian Wright, former Kansas player, from out of the Chicago area, and lost to Lewis Williams, who's now in the NBA, played out uh, in the high school in Georgia, went straight to the NBA. Shipman off to Walker, the three in and out. You know who the runner-up was for Devendorf services? He decided to go to Syracuse. You know who finished second? No. Florida. Wow. He almost went down and played basketball for Billy Donovan. What a tap! Was that Harris? Yeah, it was Harris. Wow. But I'll tell you this, you know, he decommitted. He committed earlier right. to Michigan State. Yes. And then chose Syracuse over Florida, second time around. Ray Shipman at this point, he's a freshman, considered to be more advanced defensively than offensively. Devendorf with a pull-up, left it short. 
Yeah, Chipman's more of an athlete. These yeah. guys going to run up and down the floor, Chipman, as opposed to shoot the jump shot. Walker, good wheels. Kalathis, little push shot for the baseline. Rebound on Uwaku, and he is clearly the strongest player on the floor here tonight. Yeah, they're going to get some bass. They're going to get the ball inside to Anawaku. Take advantage of his physical talent around the post. Averaged almost 13 points and just over eight rebounds per game last year. And in the offseason, in the summer, Dick, he dramatically changed his diet. He's big and strong, but he's got a lot less body fat, a lot better stamina this year than a year ago. We had a good game here. These two clubs really searching for a little identity right now early in the season. This is one of those matchups that you really want to win to get yourself a little confidence. Routens with his third three and a half. I think, you think they missed that? They missed that jump shot? You think they missed even North? Let me tell you something. Those two guys are going to be a big plus because they're going to have better spacing with the driving ability of Flint. Syracuse in the zone. Galathis, Parsons, Walker, Shipman, four of the guys on the floor right now for Florida can shoot it. Well, you know, they struggled last game, one for 16, right. shoot threes. They've only made one here. That's what Shipman can do, although he has the layup attempt blocked, and then the foul is called on Cheney. He hesitated. He hesitated going to the goal. Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, guys, Andy Routens is one of the best shooters Jim Beheim has ever had. At least that's what Coach Beheim has said. He was 4 for 20 coming into tonight. I asked him, are you feeling okay? Are your legs underneath you after the knee injury? He said, honestly, I'm just missing shots. I feel terrific physically. Remember, he did. Did get ahead of the curve this summer playing with the Canadian national team for his father, Leo Routens. I tell you, Doris, you know a little bit about guard play and point guard play. You and Billy Donovan, two of the best ever at Providence. <laughs> but I have to say, you are not number one. Number one, I'm going with a Paisan, Ernie D. Gregorio. <laughs> Ernie D, boy, he can handle the ball. Yeah. But even Billy Donovan will say the best point guard Providence had in the 80s was Doris Burke. Oh, he's, he's <laughs> right about that. <laughs> she left, did you know this? She left the school as the Big East leader wow. in career assists. I also know she used to babysit for Patino when he never gave her a tip. <laughs> <laughs> Syracuse by five. Just over four minutes to go here in the first half. Semi-final number one in Kansas City. Kansas and Washington after this one here on ESPN2. Syracuse started man. Now they've been zoned for a while. Chaney, now what a rebound and a putback by Tyus. Tyus hey, is Tyus. going to give him some good quality minutes inside. Yep. He really is. You know, you think about Jimmy Beheim. You mentioned 87. He loses the final to our own Robert Montgomery Knight. But also, Billy Donovan was playing that era, and here they are coaching against each other. Syracuse by three, under four to go in the first half. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Syracuse with a three-point lead on Florida late in the first half. One of the, the most memorable games, I would think, for Jim Beheim and for Billy Donovan. Back to 1987, a final four. Syracuse and Providence, Billy the Kid, a senior. He's averaged 20 points per game that season. And uh, Donovan, though in this game, Dick, was held in check, scored only eight points. Syracuse won 77-63, but the Orange went on to lose two days later to Bob Knight in Indiana in the National Championship. Yeah, that was the great Derek Homer was on our team as a diaper dandy. And I want to wish Derek the best. I know he's battled some health issues, and we wish him the best. He was a terrific rebounder, made my top 50 in my mm -hmm. new book as one of the 50 best players in my 30 years at ESPN. Two Syracuse players in there, right? Yes, Pearl Washington as well, yep. who, by the way, just was named the head coach in high school out in New York at Boys and... Wow. I, I believe it was at uh, Boys and Girls High School. I, it was named as Thomas Jefferson High School. I mean, told us Thomas and Jefferson High School. He played at Boys and Girls High School, did he not? Yes, sir. The Pearl. Can I coach the women's team? Flynn a little strong on the three. Florida looking to run. Syracuse has been taking a lot of threes against that Florida zone. Andy Routens has knocked down three of them, helping them do a three-point lead. Is that zone 2-3? I'd like to face that 2-3. I would have a feel that my <laughs> shooting ability on the wings, I'd go right slide in that gap on the wing, but, but, and I would pray for Kaladis to get me to rock. But if somebody got right up on you, I don't know about you going by anybody anymore. No, I can't go no. by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go by the yeah. UCLA Brew mascot. <laughs> Paul Harris is fouled by Alan Chaney. Well, tomorrow night, catch the semifinals of the EA Sports Maui Invitational year after year, one of the great Feast Week tournaments in college basketball. Texas and Notre Dame have already won tonight to advance to semifinal number one. North Carolina, Chaminade, the winner of that game against the winner of Oregon and Alabama in game two. Texas defeated St. Joe's, 
And Notre Dame pounded on an undermanned Indiana squad in their game tonight. Well, a lot of people are going to pound on Tom Crean, and they better have their fun right now because I'm going to tell you, he will get mm -hmm. even in about three years. There's no doubt he will sell that magical name of Indiana and get great players. The foul on Cheney, his third. He goes to the bench. Harris misses the front end. Harris, not a good shooter, but he's a pretty good free throw shooter. Sh shot in the 70s last year. And you're right. He walks out on the gym before the game, and the first thing you think, I think you said it, looks like a defensive pass. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you can play for the Syracuse football team. Deep three by Calathis. Right over the top three. of the 2-3. Three. Three. Stepped three. right there, shot like a little one-hander. He's a talent. What about a salute to Syracuse winning that football game over the fighting Irish from right. Notre Dame? And Cameron Dentley, the son of Adrian Dentley, former Notre Dame and a Hall of Famer. Harris knocks down the mid-range jumper. Sparked them down the stretch. Threw the touchdown pass to win the game. Good start for Harris, as you can see. 8.6 rebounds in the first half. He's filling up that stat sheet. Yep. He's a staff stuffer. With that body, he should be. And that athletic ability. Heard you talking about the Irish in your, in your pregame hits. Do you think it's 6-6? Six uh -oh. six? They should not go to a bowl? Is that what you, th is that what you said pregame? My feeling yeah. is 6-6 six six should not... He should not be allowed to go to a bowl game. He should at least have a winning record. How about that pass by Calathis again? Great he just, vision. he's got eyes in the I back marvel. of his head. I marvel about yep. the kid. As Billy said, he's one step ahead of the action. Get a bowl bit. You should at least have a winning record. And I'll tell you this, and I feel strongly. I love Notre Dame. I have scholarships there in my name. My family all went there. My daughters, my sons-in-laws love the university. But if they get blown out, get blown out by Southern Cal. To me, if I were the university, I would simply say we haven't earned a bowl bit. Just because we're the fighting Irish in Notre Dame. So you would turn it down. I would you turn, would turn it, down. it down. Yeah, it's all about money though that won't turn it down. Six and six should not be bowl eligible. Look at the night for Alex Tyus. Look at the night for Andy Routens as he knocks down his fourth three of the night. Can't let him get that look. He said before the game he's feeling 100% that he's all the way back from the torn ACL. And certainly the shot is falling tonight. Nice, nice run. Run. Shipman on the cut. The follow for Tyus. He's got 14. Well, he's a good offensive rebounder. He's just hanging around getting yeah. all the garbage. He's converting at all the garbage on the inside. Can you imagine I'm including this club with a bit with spades? But then you could say Dante Green. Right. However, I say addition through subtraction. Because Dante Syracuse. Green left? Be well, because I don't think he played with passion the entire game on the defensive end. I'll tell you, Andy Routens is playing with passion tonight, and he's playing with precision as well. His fifth three. And I like Dante Green's ability. I think he's a talented player, but I don't think oh. he utilized it. He, anything you can do, Andy, I can do better. Some talent in this game here tonight. Flynn has it knocked away by Hodge. Kalathis on the wing. Open is Parsons. And his shot continues to struggle. Now numbers for the orange. Flynn. Harris. Count it. I tell you, Flynn has great vision as well. Makes the good pass. I will tell you this. If these two teams aren't in a big dance, then I'm going to tell you, our nation, we got some strong basketball <laughs> teams, really. I mean, these have got to be two of the better 65 teams in America. I agree with you. The shot clock is turned off, and finally... You agree with me? I agree with I you. I can't believe you agree November with me. November 24th. Wow. I agree with you. <laughs> shot clock turned off. The pace slowed down. And Kalaith is fouled by Routens. You know, Dan, we made an interesting point. That I'm just curious to you. Do you agree 6-6? Six and six, Should that be a bowl team? Let me just say this. That... That foul was by design for Routens. They're not yet in the one and one, one. so they fouled him just right. to slow him down. I understand what you're saying, but money talks. I mean, it's, yeah, it's no the way the world works. No, so, you know. but I, and they're eligible. I mean, yeah. I don't fault yeah. Notre Dame. They are eligible at six wins. I'm just saying they should change the rule. Should at least have seven wins you know and be a winning record to go. I don't mind that as much, the fact that there's no national championship. No uh, true playoff, hey, hey. You know, playoff yeah. system. You if know, you want to get on a soapbox, get on that okay, one. Okay, the yeah. beauty of a college basketball, the Davids play the Goliaths. Yeah. Davidson won basket away from going to the Final yeah. Four. Yeah. Ball yeah. State, yeah. Boise State. Utah, I know. undefeated, you know and what? have no dream you know of winning what? a national title. You know what? I agree with you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, those kids don't get a chance to play against the big guys. A Florida turnover. Syracuse with the ball. Four seconds to go. Gator's going to try to keep it out of Flynn's hands. And it's turned over to Calathis. All kinds of time. Oh, he found the be intentional. That was an intentional oh, wow. foul. That's a break for Syracuse because he just kind of, he didn't make that much of an attempt at the ball. You know, Rounds had four threes in his first three games. He's already got yep. five tonight. I think you heard our Doris Burke talk about how he's been struggling shooting the three coming in here. Still not a shooting foul. Team foul number six, so... 
Uh, no, no shots. It'll be Florida's ball to inbound. No look pass into the corner. High. <laughs> well, and that will bring an entertaining first half to a close. A whole of them. Three-point lead for the Orange over the Gators as we start the second half. Nick Kalathis with 11 points, three assists in the first half. Alan Chaney came off the bench and played very well for Florida as well. And Florida starts the second half in the 2-3 zone. They spent much of the first half in the zone. Now, Andy Routens is not a starter for Syracuse, so he's not in the game right now. But we'll see if the Gators stay in that zone. Anganat probing for an opening in the zone. Anawaku's in the middle for the orange. Devendorf penetrated well into that zone at times in the first half. Finds Anganat who lays it in. So a five-point lead for the orange. We've got Kansas and Washington still to come in the second semifinal tonight. And obviously, it'll be a pro-Kansas crowd here at the Sprint Center, you would think. I mean, going would you, out on a ledge did you pull there. my plug? Did you pull my plug? <laughs> I'm not going to get a spare now. I'm not going to get a spare. He wants more yeah. air time. Yeah. He wants more air time. Don't, so he don't, pulled my plug. Don't tempt me. <laughs> don't give me any ideas, uh -huh. my friend. Uh -huh. He pulled my yeah. plug. I'm calling Norby Williams to our boss. <laughs> yeah. Norby, he doesn't want to give me 18. How about That's Florida good. getting inside right. the zone? Werner off to Tyus, who continues to pile up the points. You know, I really tell you this. Boats zones have such big holes in them that they're really taking them apart in terms of getting on the inside. I mean, it's a little layup against the zone right in the gap of it. They overload and the little jams. So Tyus with 16. The sophomore's already got a career high in points. See, I don't think this Florida team can really pressure. I don't think it has the kind of speed and quickness to go up and down the floor. Devendorf wide open, knocks down the three. three. I'll tell you one thing, if he starts making that three along with Routens and Flint's penetration ability, they're going to be dynamic. If you're Jim Beheim, do you feel happy that in the first half you had a lead, even though Flynn only had two points, Devendorf hadn't scored. Those are his first points of the game. Werner with a turnaround jumper for the Gators. That was certainly very positive, almost similar to the Duke situation right. with Southern Illinois when Henderson and Singler right. didn't have a point at halftime, yet they were up by six. Man to man now for the Gators. I think that's a good decision coming out of that zone. Harris lost it on the way up. Devendorf, such a quick change of direction. Double team on Anawaku looking for help. Does a nice job to dribble out of it. Inside, Flynn is foul. Boy, good ball movement there by the Orange. Yeah, good interior pass, and Jim's even up uh, clapping his hands. Uh, really appreciative of that. His third. The foul on Dan Werner, his third. Alan Chaney's a big guy who comes off the bench for Florida. He's got three as well, so the depth of the Florida front court is going to be tested. Billy Donovan a concern about that. Johnny Flynn now to the line for Syracuse. An outstanding freshman season for the Orange. Had to play almost every minute, as we mentioned, in the first half. Over 39 minutes per game at a Big East play. He averaged better than 15 points, five assists per game, and was the co-rookie of the year in the Big East with Dewan Blair of Pittsburgh. Hey, you talk about Dewan Blair. You talk about a physical presence. You talk yep. about that Pittsburgh team. I think there's a club that's going to be a legit top 10 team. Well, that league is so nice loaded. Pass. Great ball movement again. This time, Warner gets again. the layup. Yeah, their big guys can really pass the basketball. They distribute the rock really well. Good two-man play. Flynn on the inside. That's he loves man-to-man. -man. He'll just take you apart. His explosiveness. Well, you get the feeling from both coaches that they don't quite yet know exactly what they've got, exactly how good their teams can be, but they're pretty optimistic about them improving and becoming good by the end of the season. Dorf, nice shot fake inside, tough one, yes! I tell you, his driving ability, that was the thing that always impressed me. You know, he's averaging 17 a game last yeah. year when he went down with an injury. A lot of guys battling, coming back from injuries, Run steal, Patrick Patterson... Eight-point lead now for the Orange. Walter Hodge. Where's Mr. Hodge been? He's been really quiet. He's been silent. 
Calathis inside. Tyus in and out. Boy, two good looks on that trip for the Gators, but they come up empty. I think we have two good teams here. I really do. Angonot switches hands and draws the foul. Flynn leading the break again for the Orange. Well, don't forget, this is one of the great weeks of college basketball. Tomorrow night, you can catch the semifinals of the EA Sports Maui Invitational. It'll be Texas against Notre Dame in a top-10 matchup. Then the second semifinal will be based on the outcome of the games tonight. Carolina taking on Chaminade, Oregon, and Alabama. The EA Sports Maui Invitational, a part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's on ESPN. I there one thing, Jay and Billy and all those guys, Sean, how do they always get that? I mean, they always go to Maui. They get all those trips. We go to the cold weather. I mean, I thought we had a little ranking, too. I got a lot of years hey, here on ESPN. Demand, you demand. It's this unbelievable. <laughs> wow, they do a great job, though. Great trio. They really do a super job preparing. Billy's been incredible over the years. Jay does a phenomenal job. And really can't say enough about all those guys. Anganat knocks him down. And this is the largest lead of the night for Syracuse. They're up by 10. Anganat gives him any kind of scoring at all is a plus. Any kind of scoring. But they've got guys like Devendorf, Flynn, who can score. So the fact that they've got a do-the-dirty-work kind of guy like Anganat, look at that offensive rebound. Kenny KG up strong, and he's foul. You know, here's a kid who they're really hoping really comes on. He's got a lot of things going his way. He's got a great size. Played at the academy down in Bradenton, Florida, where I just recently spoke at a big banquet honor and Nick Boletari, who just uh, has been a, certainly should be a Hall of Famer in the world of tennis for what he's done and contributed. But he's there because the academy now is more than just basketball. It's an IMG academy, and they have really tennis and golf and you name it, soccer. So many great players. Florida got some great recruits coming in next year. A kid named Murphy, who they think is going to be really a good one. And certainly Kenny Boynton should be a star of stars coming in at 6'2". A couple of missed free throws by KG. Walter Hodge has gone to the bench for the Gators, and freshman Irving Walker is back in for Florida. Hodge is scoreless in this game. Florida back in that zone. And again, no Routens in the game right now. Not a starter. He hit five threes off the bench, though, for the Orange in the first half. He's looking at Jim Baham. He said, Coach, look at that zone. Get me on the floor. Again, more good interior <laughs> passing on Iwaku Harris. to Anganat to Harris for the jumper. Anawaku passes the ball really well, and there's yep. Harris making a jumper from about 15 feet. He's probably tired of hearing announcers saying that he can't make a long-range shot. Anawaku's really come a long way in so many aspects of his game. Walker on the penetration from 15, knocks it down. He's going to be a good player. He's a typical New York City kid, can really handle the rock, really quick. Flynn in some trouble, gets out of it. Boy, the poise with which both Calathis and Flynn play. They're both just sophomores. Look at Anawaku. In and out. Boy, he got a great look all because of his strength, but he couldn't finish. Yeah, that was really good execution. He got in deep. Oh, nice play. He it over the top. Diagonal. Parsons with a slam. And there's an example of Calathis one step ahead, as yep. Billy said. Anticipate. Don't react. You want to anticipate. Nick Calathis, Dick, is a special talent. Again, not a prototypical point guard. Not quite as quick. And he's big, but he can shoot it. He can handle it. He can lay it in right here. Count it. It's a goaltend on Devendorf. Nick Calathis has a bright, bright future. That's why they had to put the ball in his hands. Jay Lucas should have understood that. When we come back, Mr. Vital's getting back on the soapbox. First, he's schooling Charles Barkley. These views coming up after the break. We're going to hear all, oh, you got stuffed. You got stuffed. Oh, Charles, thanks. Thanks, Charles. Camps and clinics and all the all-star games he's put on, and he's helped the college game so much. Howard Garfinkel belongs in. I don't think there's any doubt Howard Garfinkel for what he's done. Bob Hurley. You think about Bob Hurley and Jack Curran, two high school coaches that have impacted the college game by developing so many great players. The five-star camp of Howard Garfinkel. And I would echo the sentiment of Billy Packer about Walter Byers. I don't think there's any doubt. He was the guy that started it all for the NCAA. Walter Myers belongs in the Hall of Fame as a contributor. Johnny Flynn for three. I let Nolan Richardson out earlier. He was the uh, the seventh member, the other member who was inducted last night. And there were some great stories from Nolan Richardson and from Jim Phelan and from Charles Barkley and from the 
himself, of course, from everybody. Billy Packer, all night long. Great stories, a great night. What about some other players who you think belong in the Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame? Is Irving Walker answers with a three. Walker answers with a three. I think two automatics. Wayman Tisdale and Ruff. Sampson. I don't think there's any doubt whatsoever. I mean, I think Sampson, three times he's won the National Player of the Year, the only player to ever do that. He should be in an Aceman Hall of Fame as well. And Wayman Tisdale belongs in the Hall of Fame. Routens is back in. Five threes in the first half. His first try this half won't go down. And also you've got the Maui Classic. What about Wayne Duke and all he has done in the world of basketball? And for folks who have not been here, if you're ever in the Kansas City area, it's it's great. I mean, it's a beautiful oh, Hall of Fame. It, it's It's brand new. It's only a couple of years old. It's very interactive, very entertaining, very educational. A terrific day or night for a college basketball You know, a tribute certainly to Jim Haney of the NABC. I said Blair Kirkhoff and all the media here in Kansas City who made that happen. Reggie Mitten in the NABC do a great job. The National Association of Basketball Coaches as part of the experience. Kalathis, no. The follow, yes. Chandler Parsons, I think, was the one getting it back up and in there. So Parsons with a couple of buckets here in the second half after a scoreless first half. This is a heck of a basketball game. Yep. Two really quality teams, two well-coached teams, good athletes, good point guard play. Florida's ranked. They're number 18. Syracuse is unranked right now. Routens will try it from the left wing, left it short, and nobody gets on the glass. Chris Joseph with the easy putback. He's got eight. So Syracuse getting great work off their bench from the likes of Routens and Joseph. The bench at halftime was outscoring the starters. The only thing I disagree with Billy is I can't see staying in that zone as long as he stayed in that zone. Parsons misses the three. Well, Billy Donovan is obviously coming to this game determined to play the zone and stay in the zone unless he feels they have to come out of it. It's 61 points for Syracuse with over 13 minutes to go. These teams are going to get up into the 80s, maybe the 90s here tonight. See, I don't think they're really effective. They don't move as a unit in that zone. To be an effective zone, five people have to really rotate together. If one guy breaks down, you leave a gap in the scene. Routens with a turnover. Looked like he thought somebody might be cutting into the middle of that zone, but nobody was moving. Open is Werner for three. And a good, strong rebound by Harris. He just took it right away from Shipman. Routens, and he's fouled. You know, this team's got to get a little familiar playing with each other again with Routens and Divendorf not playing. They need games, as Jimmy Bayheim would say. They need a lot of game action, a little competition to get back into the rhythm and the flow. Well, they're going to get some competition, especially once they get to conference play. An 18-game wow. season as of last year in the 16-team Big East. So you play everybody once and three teams twice. Divendorf, no. Jackson underneath, and he's fouled. Syracuse will play Georgetown, Villanova, and Rutgers twice. They are also going to Memphis. You and I are going to see them in Memphis yeah, we'll on December the 20th. You know, Memphis got beat by Xavier. What a performance by Xavier. You talk about winning it's tough perfect. games. They won three tough games. They beat Missouri, who really had a good tournament, and that they beat Southern Cal. Missouri did. The Murray Carroll had 29 points and 11 rebounds. I think they're going to be a solid team in the Big 12. And they also beat Virginia Tech by yep. one, Xavier, and then won the championship in the last two minutes, Florida, beating a Memphis team Tyus, that's really trying to blend in some new kid John Calabari said he was upset with the play of his veteran players. Dan Werner, you can see, sits down his fourth foul of the game. So that's a loss for the Gators. He's one of their most experienced players. He and Walter Hodge, really. One of two for Jackson. He comes up with the offensive rebound, scoops it up off the glass, gets it back again, and has it blocked. He's a physical presence on the inside, but a little limited in terms of scoring. You know the big reason why they say he's so much more physical and so much stronger this year than last year? No, I don't. Help he, me. he got pushed around by Anuaku all last well, season, and he decided he better get stronger. Yeah, you're going to compete with that every day in yep. practice. That's how you become a better team when you have the kind of competition every day in your workouts, and you have to fight for playing time. Jackson and Steps. Think about Syracuse. You think about the 2,000-point career scorers, Lawrence Moten, Coleman, John Wallace, McNamara, Warwick, and Douglas. Some unbelievable names when you think about the era. 
of Syracuse. You got to credit Dave Gavin too for forming that Big East that has become such a monster. I think the Big East, I told you the other day, in my 30 years at ESPN now, it's the toughest from top to bottom I've ever seen. Well, you've got four teams in the top eight of the national rankings right now, and it's early, so the rankings can fluctuate a lot. But whether it's Connecticut, whether it's Louisville, whether it's Pittsburgh, whether it's Notre Dame, these are all legitimate contenders. And then, as Jim Beheim said, even the teams down at the bottom, like a Seton Hall, look at what Seton Hall has done. They've beaten USC and Virginia Tech already. And they're picked to be 13th in the conference. Nice kick. The Lathis cut off on the baseline, turns it over. Three guard look right now really for Syracuse. Flynn, Devendorf, and Routens all in the game together. Devendorf for three. They're going to get that open wing jump shot. See, the one thing about a conference so deep like that, you can have a lot of mediocrity because you all beat each other. Beat the heck out of each other. Syracuse up seven here on Florida. 11.52 to go in the second half in Kansas City. Bob Knight will join me for game two, but let's get a Dickie V preview there. Well, you know, I spoke to Bob a little bit earlier today, and he's really high on Cole Aldridge, and he certainly knows Kansas having coached in league. And if Bob says it, I believe it because there's nobody I've been around who knows basketball as well as he does, and he really feels that Aldridge is going to be a special, special big man. Well, he had some big moments for them in the national semifinal win against North Carolina last year. Had 8.7 rebounds and four blocks. So he is ready to step into a major role along with Collins, who's really the leader of that Kansas team. Right yeah, I'm hearing the great things about Collins. They tell me that he has really improved from the top team before the game. Find the writer. Walker, a great look into Alex Tyus. And Tyus has just found the seams in the zone, found the gaps, and he just, he just goes up and he dunks the ball. The guy that's got to get going for them is hot. Hodge has not yep. scored yet. He's a veteran player, an experienced guy. He's going to still put some points on the board. Diefendorf's two for nine, yet Syracuse has got the lead. 18 now for Tyus. They'll lay off Joseph, daring him to shoot. Instead, he'll drive and force one up. Not a good shot. Jim Beheim either unhappy with the shot or the lack of a foul call. And there's going to be a block on Eric Diefendorf. See, if you penetrate like this, there's Walker with a little penetration. He dumps it down inside, and Tyus with the flush and the finish. Great attack. Drive, draw, and dish. It's not fancy. It's been part of basketball for many a year, just like the screen and roll. The late is to inbound it for the Gators. I'll tell you one thing about Kalatis I like as well. He plays with a lot of poise. Seems to really play under control. And I love his size to be able to see over the top of that defense. A 6'6 six, six point guard, better than six assists per game last year, just a sophomore. Tyus called for shuffling the feet. You know, it's amazing. He's leading them in steals. Yep. He's leading them in rebounding. He's leading them in scoring. He's leading them in assists. Mm -hmm. He's leading them in Mr. Popularity. <laughs> He's leading them at the lunch table. He's leading them in every category. A very, at least when we spoke to him this morning, a very quiet, humble, soft-spoken young man. But he... He plays with a lot of fire inside, and he, he is clearly the guy that makes this team go right now. He's not quiet on that floor. No. Good buddies with Johnny Flynn, the point guard of Syracuse. They met in the McDonald's All-American game. They were teammates there. They played a five-star camp and others together. Anawaku on the inside. Anawaku got Anawaku. deep inside. See, that's why I'm telling you, Howard Garfield on that five-star camp has developed so yeah. many people. Tyus, again, his previous career that's high was 13. The sophomores got 20 tonight, and I don't know that any of the buckets has come from further than about two feet away from the basket. You know, I'll tell you, 24 total points coming into this game. He's active on the yeah. inside, and they're finding him in that opening against that zone. Yeah, the guards are doing a great job penetrating and dishing to him. Demon yeah. Dark does a great job doing the same thing for Harris. He can't play that zone. That zone's got too many holes in it. Both sides. Yeah. <laughs> 66-59, almost 10 minutes to go. What surprises me is you see all these athletes out there and you don't see some man-to-man. Some, some -to -man. Boy, Florida looks like they are well-schooled in dealing with this zone. Great ball movement. It's knocked out of bounds. Well, you're not shocked at all. I think, Billy, I think whenever you talk the making of a coach, Check I think there's three areas you have to Harry excel Walker. in. One, you have to be able to recruit, obviously. Two, you got to be a communicator to your concepts and also with the media and with your alumni and people. And number three, you better be able to finish it off by handling a practice session and also handling game strategy, an X and O guy. And he does all really well. Shipman, Cheney into the game now for Florida. A couple of freshmen. Over the top. And a foul. Anuaku. The call is that he backed into Tyus 
as Tyus was going up for the alley-oop. Anuaku protesting the call, said he was playing the ball. Jim Beheim agrees with Anuaku. Today, you talk about Florida has been dominant in non-league action. In 2006, they were 23-0. 2007, 22-2. 2008-16-4. 3-0 and thus far. So that's like 64-6. It's unbelievable. And I'll tell you, they, they've won their last six games against Big East teams. That's pretty impressive as well. Anuaku still arguing about that foul call as Tyus misses the first. Jim Beheim still trying to argue, but nobody's listening to him. You know, I loved it when he won that national championship back-to-back. -back. The fact that all those kids came back, I thought, was such a credit to their relationship with Florida and their love for college basketball. Horford and Nolan, that entire gang, said no to the NBA and came back and went back-to-back. I always felt that Horford would be a better pro than Noah. I remember saying to you a number of times. One time I got in trouble. I think I it was an article. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Anuaku, how about the strength inside? We said that we thought that would be a difference inside. No one to really handle him around that basket. Look at the intensity of Jim Beheim. Still going strong after many a year. A Hall of Famer. Fourth foul on Allen Cheney. Just brute strength by Anuaku. Hey, you talk about most division 20 game win seasons, active coaches. Bayheim with 30 is number one. Mike Krzyzewski's coached a little bit as 24. Jim Calhoun, 22. And Bob Huggins, 20. Talk about current consecutive 20-game win season. Tubby Smith was here last night at 15, has 15. Mike Krzyzewski, 12. And Mr. Bayheim, 11. And Mr. Donovan and Bill Self. And Dana Altman with 10. Kenny KG in the lane early. So Anuaku will get another chance at the free throw. The foul was on Cheney, his fourth. He sits down. Werner comes back in. And he's got four fouls. The free throw gives Syracuse a 10-point lead here in semifinal number one. The O'Reilly Auto Parts semifinal. Here with the Sprint Center in Kansas City, a part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Kansas and Washington still to come after this game here on ESPN2. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, and Doris Wayne, Bob Knight. Joining me for the second game, Calathis with a three, and it's back to within seven. See, I'm on a JV team. He's the varsity. I'm the junior varsity early game, and he's got the varsity <laughs> game. I mean, that's why he's Luke Garrick and I'm Wally Pipp. We like to be fair, Mr. Pipp. You're getting a late game tomorrow, all right? We like to be fair. You, you, you can argue with Coach Knight? <laughs> I will never argue with Coach Knight. I know better. Flynn. Big three, the lead back to 10. He's played under control. I think the one area that last year you could question a little bit was his shot selection, but he tried to do so much because he didn't have enough help. Yep. And also playing 33 minutes a game is going to help him as compared to having to play 40 minutes a game last year. Flynn's got 12, 10 of them here in the second half. Werner, nice kick. Shitman wide open and misses the three. Harris with another big rebound. Oh, good Stolen away by Werner. They back off, he'll knock down the shot. Two good That's plays by Dan Warner. You know, Warner's Warner. got to really step it up. He's been quiet. He and Hodge, two guys that really count off for a lot of point production, have been really quiet. That was a good defensive play, and then he converted. Under eight to go, Syracuse with the ball and an eight-point lead. Paul Harris, by the way, has nine rebounds already tonight. Devendorf steps into the three, too strong. I want a question from Paris to Billy Donovan after this game. Why so long in the zone? That rebound for Harris, his 10th. He's got a double-double. Flynn comes up with a uh -oh, steal. Uh -oh. Three on uh oh, oh. Jam City. Three uh -oh. on oh, Jake. Johnny Flynn, Flynn just ran Flynn. right by everybody on what all of a sudden looks like a tired Florida team. They just did not get back. I don't blame them for getting that layup. Well, they were really four. Wasn't that they got tired, Dan? They were just caught behind. Walker for three. The offenses are putting on a show. He's going to give them a lot of positive minutes. He knows how to play that little guy. He's the guy who benefits the most, if you want to phrase it that way, from Jay Lucas deciding to transfer. Walker's going to get a lot of playing time. I still have a tough time understanding the decision of Jay Lucas to want to leave. I really do. Why well, wouldn't want to be part of this team. But again, you know, everybody has their own decisions. His father was as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. A teammate of Arlen Elmore. Exactly. At Maryland. Ben Elmore, one of the greatest rebounders you can ever, ever see, and a class guy. Every student athlete should follow and emulate Leonard Elmore. Well put. 6.45 to go. Syracuse leading Florida by seven. Well, an improving John Laura, sophomore, one of the big reasons why you can't sleep on Wisconsin in the Big Ten. Here, Syracuse leading Florida, 74-67. to 67. Dickie, we're talking about some of the coaches with consecutive 20-win seasons. Tubby Smith, who was here last night, leads all active coaches 
with 15. Jim Beheim, Billy Donovan on the list, and Bill Self coming up in the next game. I'll tell you also, Dana Altman, you people watch out. You want a surprise team this year? Keep an eye on Creighton. Creighton's going to have a heck of a year this season. And Dana Altman's been missing sure the consistency there. there. They are picked to win the Missouri Valley Conference. We saw Southern Illinois in New York last week. They're picked second. Harris already with a double-double in this game. 14 points, 10 rebounds. Syracuse got four players with 12 or more points. You talk about balance. Hey, speaking about a guy that really deserves some credit, you look at Jim Beheim. We give you enough credit, Jimmy B. <laughs> Rick Giles, what a job he's done. You people don't know who he is, but he's the guy responsible for coaches versus cancer tournament for this getting here, get together here. He does a great job with the Gazelle group, and I simply say thank you, Rick, for all the hard work. You're a guy that really loves college hoops. Rick Giles with the Gazelle group, the group that puts on this and so many other good early season college basketball tournaments. Walker knocks it down. Florida not going away. Down six with a lot of time left in the game. Stepping up the pressure. Broken by the orange. And laying it in is Joseph on the feed from Devendorf. It was Devendorf with the great penetration, but Joseph with the finish. He's a slasher. He's got great slashing ability. He's got ten points tonight, and the lead is back to eight. Deep one by Walker. Onowaku with the uncontested rebound, rips it away from Calathis. Here comes Syracuse again. Devendorf switches hands, lays it in. He's a big-time driver. He can really attack to get to the glass. Onowaki yesterday was telling me at the Hall of Fame ceremony, he said, Dickie V, Dickie V, I want you to meet a type of dandy, Mr. Joseph. I said, he said, I know him. Am I a type of dandy? I said, no, Onowaki, you're no longer a type of dandy. Werner, no. Follow, no. Onowaku, another rebound. Well, the more you watch this Syracuse team, I like the more it. you can see I how really much do. better they're going to be than a year ago. Absolutely. Yep. People up to carry a are going to have a lot to cheer about this year. One of my favorites of all time, going to watch Syracuse, the Pearl. The Pearl Washington, he could feed the post than anybody else that I've ever watched in my 30 years at ESPN. He had such great touch in getting the ball to the inside. And Coleman was such a Windex man. Well, some great point guards at Syracuse under Jim Behan. I guess Pearl Washington and Sherman Douglas are the first two who come to mind. Sherman was a score yep. machine at that point as well. It was so fun for fun to watch play. Billy Owens and company. Timeout called by Florida. Under five to go. Syracuse up by 10 on the Gators. So we got our coach guy in the Hall of Fame, Nolan Richardson. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's no doubt he's won a junior high, high school, college, junior college. And you know what? He would win in the NBA. And I know for a fact he would coach in the NBA. Some NBA team is making a major mistake. Charles agreed with me. He talked at halftime. Nolan has a great ability to communicate and motivate. So some NBA team make a call to Nolan Richardson. Spectacular ball movement against the zone by the Gators. Tyus from Calathis. Here comes the pressure. Billy Donovan wants this team to press much more. They've got more bodies this year than they had a year ago, but they haven't really been able to force that many turnovers tonight. Well, they're going to try to do something here. It's getting late in the game. Yep. The winning time, now they're down eight. They're sitting in that zone. That zone has been really a lot of holes. Not a back play of man to man. See, Flynn's, his eyes are lighting up right now. A couple of buddies, Flynn and Calathis. Flynn off to Harris. Ten on the shot clock. Harris from the baseline. Florida ball. Good possession defensively right there by Florida. Good decision going to the man to man. Under four to go here in Kansas City. Syracuse 79, Florida 71. Werner was not expecting that pass, but a foul going against the Orange will take us to the under four media timeout. The Gators trying him out a comeback late here against the Orange. Dan, one of the major themes in college basketball last season was all the impact freshmen, Derrick Rose, Kevin Love. You could make a case that Johnny Flynn has had as much responsibility on his shoulders a year ago as any freshman in college basketball. 39 minutes per game he played, including a 13-game stretch where he rested for one minute. Now, look at the scoring tonight for the Orange. Five double-digit scorers. His life much easier with the likes of Eric Devendorf and Andy Routon. Jim Beheim will tell you he can focus now on more getting the... The other players involved, in addition to his great scoring ability. I'll tell you, Doris, that's a great point you just made there about the ability to distribute the ball. And Jim Beheim's got to be happy to have the kind of balance, which you're 100% right, Doris, which I expect because you're always right, that he's able to find open shooters, guys that can make shots. The most frustrating thing to a point guard is coming down, giving the ball up, and it's brick after brick. You build, build a beautiful new arena, but you can't win basketball games. Well, they've got some offensive weapons on this Syracuse team. That goes 
without saying. They've scored 79 points, but they've allowed 73. So Florida, a young Florida team, has given the Orange a run for its money. Kansas and Washington next year on ESPN2. Flynn, tough pass inside. Harris lost it. I think this year you're going to see a record in the NCAA. A record in that you're going to see more than eight teams for the first time ever to the NCAA tournament, the Big East. And you said it the other day, and you said it so well. What are the reasons so deep? they got 16 sure. teams in yeah. conference ball. Yeah. But it's a as good a league as there is in the country, and there it wouldn't shock anybody if they got nine, maybe even ten. Syracuse now a little bit patient. They're going to use the clock. Still three minutes to go. And a timeout call by Jim Beheim. He did not like what he was seeing. You know, on Jim that offensive not, possession. Jim Bay before was 1.2 million. We had a great one with Mike Krzyzewski. And in 2010, we have Tony Dungy. And I'm not going to mention the other guy. It'll bring the house down. <laughs> I'm going to announce it at the V Foundation game on December 8th. Right. You can't believe who Rihanna Dungy and another basketball absolute super superstar. With two on the shot clock, the miss of the air ball put back up and in by Harris. How is that athlete? Ability. There it is. Big play for Harris and Syracuse. Tyus with two more at the other end. Again set up by the penetration against the zone. These teams have been shredding each other's zones most of the night. And a reach and foul committed by Parsons. Now we get down to free throw shooting, which so many times determines whether you go to the winner's circle or the loser's circle. Down the years, Syracuse has struggled over the years on that free throw line. There's the good second effort. You can't teach athleticism. I mean, guys either have that ability to run and jump. And you can do a lot of things with athletes. I used to love six, five, six, six athletes that are versatile, very flexible. Well, that's a Paul Harris. He's, he, he's tough to really, you know, is he a guard? Is he a forward? Does he do this? Does he do that? He, there, but he's just got the strength and the size and the rebounding ability to be a factor. He's a defensive Florida. back. Yep. He should definitely go to the yeah. NFL. Yeah. And you know what? Over the years, there's been guys that have made the transition. I think he could be, really, if I was an NFL scout and I look at that body and quickness and athleticism, I'm going to give him a call. Paul, we're going to get you drafted, baby. Not maybe in hoops. We're going to get drafted in football. 6'5", 228, a junior out of Niagara Falls, New York, and a high school teammate of Johnny Flynn's, who came to Syracuse a year after Harris did. Interesting to say this player Walker down the stretch. Walker's out there along with Palathis. Hodge scoreless tonight. There's a defensive back play by Harris. Comes up with the interception. Off to Flynn. And there's that off the yep. Go for the rebound. And Harris draws the foul. Poor execution on the other side by Florida. Who, in my estimation, have the best combination in terms of football and basketball with Urban Meyer and Billy Donovan. And Jeremy Foley, you talk about a winner as an athletic director, he understands how to put winners together. And you know what he does really well? He pays well if you, if you perform. Correction number 10, Johnny Flynn. Johnny Flynn will go to the line. So the foul was on the Flynn drive, not the Harris follow. And a big second half for Johnny Flynn, one of the premier point guards in America. Yeah, there's some great ones. Darren Collison, Ty Lawson, North Carolina. You see him out in that Maui. That's going to be one heck of a game. Texas and Notre Dame. Looking you see Abrams and Aaron Gody going against uh, Texas. A week from tomorrow, you and I are going to be in Detroit at Ford Field. Wow, we'll see wow. Carolina, Michigan State. We'll see Ty Lawson against Kalen Lucas. I mean, what a track meet that's going to be. Yeah, Kalen Lucas, one of the quickest guys in America with the ball in his hands. Can we go down a stretch now? they got to get a score here. This is a must possession for Florida. they got to get a score. Devendorf with a bump. He's called for the foul. Foul's number Not a good foul there. You stop the clock. You put him on a line. You give him a chance to put points on the board, and the clock is not moving. You're up right now. Eight. You got a minute and 38 on the clock. Why would you want to stop yeah. the clock? And an upperclassman, too. A guy who's been around a little bit. Rounds is going to check back into the next opportunity for Jim Beheim as Nick Calathis goes to the line. This is one and one. Belath is now with 17 points on the night. Billy Donovan wants a timeout. Seven-point lead for the Orange. 1.38 to go. A 30-second timeout. We'll send it back to the studio and join Ryan Burr.
All right, fellas, thank you, Ryan and Coach Brennan. Doug Godley back in the studio enjoying this one. As we are being here in Kansas City, the Orange up seven on the Gators, a minute 38 to go. Kalathis misses the second free throw. And between Anuaku and Harris, Syracuse doing a good job on the glass and a, a foul to send Anuaku to the line. Syracuse uh, has some good free throw shooters out there. Anuaku is not among them. That was actually a good foul. Put him on a line with a minute 36 to go. Tom Brennan did a great job in Vermont when he was there as a coach. He really did a terrific job now working with Mr. Gottlieb in the studio. Mr. Gottlieb can handle the basketball when he was down at Oklahoma mm -hmm. State. They got a good one in Byron Eaton down there at the point guard slot. Two shots the rest of the way for the Orange. Anuaku shot just 45 percent from the line last year. See, that was a good foul right there. They yep. knew right away. That's through scouting. Larry Shire does a terrific job as an assistant coach. So does Bernie Fine on the other bench. Both those guys have been around the game of basketball. In fact, those guys have spent some quite a bit of time over the years over at the five-star camp with Howard Garfinkel. Now let's see right here in this possession. They're in that zone. The zone, one thing it does, it makes you take time yes. off the clock trying to attack it. Werner, a good man to have in the middle. Kicks it back out of three for Walker, the freshman. It's a four-point game. I really like Werner. I told you earlier, I like his penetration ability, and he has the ability to make the long-range shot. A lot of quick guards, they can't come up and shoot the perimeter shot. Tomorrow night, it'll be the championship game from the O'Reilly Auto Parts CBE Classic here in Kansas City. The winner of this game against the winner of our next game tonight between Kansas and Washington. The O'Reilly Auto Parts CBE Classic, a part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's on ESPN2 tomorrow night, 10 Eastern. Both, all four of these teams really getting a true evaluation as yep. to what they really are about because it's been Cupcake City. I used to tease Jim Beheim about playing all cupcakes. You used never, to. And never, no, I used to tease him about that, but you know what? Not any longer. As far as You're I'm right. concerned, he can play all cupcakes he wants because of an 18-game schedule in the Big East. Mm -hmm. And I would say, Jimmy, do it. Play the cupcakes. You got an 18-game dynamite, dynamite season. Well, all four coaches knew this was a big step up in the caliber of competition for most of their very early games. The only team amongst the four that has lost a game already this year is Washington. They lost their opening game at Portland. At Portland. So they're 2-1. and one. Kansas, Syracuse, and Florida all come into this tournament or come into these games undefeated. You know, really important to get a win here in the first round. I'll tell you why. You want to get that win to get out of the way because the one thing you want to avoid when you're in a 14 tournament like this is going 0-2 as you look at your schedule right now. Well, another foul by Florida. This time it's Chris Joseph who will go to the line. Anuaku is not going, is not in the game right now, though he's getting ready to check back in. So they foul Joseph. And that's three consecutive for missed Florida. free throws now for Syracuse. Routens out on Oahu yeah, back in. That's been a nightmare yeah, over the Syracuse. years. That's going to keep Florida alive. You convert those free throws. You put the game away. You put it in the books mm -hmm. and you tuck it away. You miss them. You just give them life. Four straight misses wow. for the Orange. Wow. Four bricks in a row on a free throw line has given life to the Gators. And they convert and take advantage. Get it to Kalatis' hands. Get it to Kalatis' hands. Bring it over. He'll make something happen. He'll make something happen. He shows some patience. A lot of teams. Absolutely. Boy, Walker not shy for a true freshman. Comes up with it. A fresh 35. Kalatis. Followed by Parsons and Werner, but they can't convert. And now another foul. Walker fouls Flynn. And that's not the guy Florida wants to send to the line, but they're it's getting to be desperation time. They had to commit that foul, but boy, they had a couple of opportunities down there. You know, so many times kids have no clue of score, strategy, and situations. It happened in the game earlier this year. UAB against Arizona, tied game. Guy fouls the guy intentionally at the end of the game for one second, and it's a tied game. He said he thought they were lo losing at mm -hmm. the time. I mean, kids really don't have the comprehension many a time. They're really, they're so into just pluck. They just pluck. And it's important for the coaches, especially the assistants, coaches to constantly remind players in case the head coach is involved in strategy what is going on Flynn a better free throw shooter than the last couple of guys who got there and he'll knock them both down he had good backspin good yep. rotation on those so it's back up to six last minute of play a must possession they have to score in his possession Tyus inside Anuaku with the rebound. And he went up with authority. They should have fouled Anuaku immediately. Should have fouled mm -hmm. him immediately. Now this is a 
some good learning, some good education here for a pretty young Florida Gators team. I mean, Billy Donovan's got a lot of freshmen and sophomores on that team. I'll tell you what, you lose this game, the consolation game tomorrow is no one at it. Right. Playing against the, the loser of Kansas and Washington, and you Dean don't want to leave here 0-2. It starts to really affect the mindset, the confidence, because all these kids feel they're going to be unbeaten right now. Everybody feels nobody can beat us. We're the best. Well, Billy Donovan says the Florida team last year, he thought they felt that way. Coming off the two national championships that some of the young guys came in as freshmen and had a sense of entitlement that things were just going to happen naturally for them. They started 18-3, and three, but then they lost eight of their next 11, did not go to the NCAA tournament, wound up in the NIT, so kind of a sobering experience for the Gators. And he sees them buying in and working a little bit harder this year than they did last year. You know, winning 24 games, I thought was really, uh, really doing a solid job yep. after you lose the likes of Noah and Brewer and Horfrey and, and you lost Corey and Green and you lost Chris that. Richard. a hey, pretty good memory. I'm missing one other guy. I'm missing another. Oh, Humphrey, the three-point <laughs> right. shooter. Yeah. Humphrey. Well, it's kind of like exactly we're going to see Kansas next. What Kansas is going They've through lost this year. six. Yep. Let's see if I can remember more. You Jackson, yep. Sasha Khan, Russell Robinson, Brandon Rush, Darrell Arthur, and Mario Chavez. Nice job. Wow. Pretty good for 69 wonder, years old. I wonder old. if my boss is listening. Norby, do you see what I did? <laughs> Norby, give me a raise. Oh, they have no more money for me. They're paying Bobby Knight. They got no money for me. Are you kidding me? They got no more cash. They're going to pay me with tuna fish sandwiches. <laughs> One of two for Anuaku. This free throw looks like yours, Dan. I saw sure you shoot it. Not so Anuaku. pretty, huh? <laughs> Not so pretty. <laughs> Walker from the free throw line. Tyus had it. Parsons has it and lays it in. 12 That's seconds left. Time Timeout, Florida. But it's all but over now. A three-possession game, 12 seconds to go. The only thing that surprised me in this game is the length of time that Florida has utilized the zone throughout this game. I know they rotated, went man pressure, went to a little trap on a full court into some man defense, but I was surprised tonight yep. as the extent of the zone that they used for the majority of the game. Good game, though. Really fun game to watch, and, and just the beginning, really, of Feast Week, one of the best weeks on the college basketball calendar. I'm going to tell you, people, if you want... Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, is jam-packed with wall-to-wall -wall hoops on ESPN. Maui showcases number one North Carolina in a field full of heavyweights. New Look Kansas begins its quest for back-to-back -back titles, a thing Florida knows something about. Basketball's elite have their sights set on the Big Apple and the world's most famous arena, while four ranked teams battle it out for supremacy in the Sunshine State. Plus, an upstart field out west and Kentucky headlining on the Vegas Strip. The table's all set. Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, all week long. And all week long, some great games. We'll have Kansas and Washington next tonight here on ESPN2. How about that tournament down in Orlando, Dick? Tennessee, Georgetown, <laughs> Michigan State, and Gonzaga all in one place. Yeah, you know, Maryland's there as well. Yep. I know a lot of people say, well, Maryland. All I know is they got one constant. His name is Gary Williams. And Gary will not take anything but an incredible performance. And Vasquez can play with anybody. Florida so looking for the quick steal. Forced to foul. Now, what do you think of the ACC? Uh, we've seen Carolina, we've seen Duke in person already. Both of them look like they're going to have terrific years. After that, who you like? Well, you know, you got to take a little week for us. I think the kid they have, the freshman, Al Farouk uh, Nino, is going to be a special player. Clemson looks like they're going to create some problems for people. The guy I feel bad for over the years has been Paul Ewan. After he went to the Final Four, he's had so many injuries. He's had some academic problems. The school, Georgia Tech, one of the tough places in America to get in. See, a lot of people don't operate with the same right. situation and recruited. You know, don't have the same budgets, don't have the same uh, situation in terms of academics. A lot of people don't understand that or comprehend it. They expect everybody to get every great player. Some schools can't get certain kids in. One of two for Harris. Cheney has fouled out, joining Werner on the bench for Florida. Game effort by the young Gators, but Syracuse is going to hang on and win it. Palathis coast to coast. Yeah, you don't Palathis. want game efforts when you're Billy Donovan, you're the Florida Gators, or you're Jim Beheim. You want Ws. Yep. You want Ws. It's Syracuse. It's Jim Beheim who gets the W here tonight, and they will advance to the championship game tomorrow night, 10 Eastern here on ESPN2, against the winner of our next game tonight between Kansas and Washington. The final score, Syracuse 89 and Florida 83.